Will Peter Parker be healthy enough to don the red and blue suit one more time to do battle with this newest goblin threat? Well, let's hop into the pages of Amazing Spider-Man issue number 89 and find out together, shall we? So then, as we pick up with the comic, we see the actual creation of the Goblin Queen, though this time, in a fun twist, we get to see it from her point of view and get to hear Dr. Kafka's internal monologue. She talks about her job and how often she would have to sit and listen to other people's problems to try and fix the cracks that were broken in other people, but now that she's been shot up with Norman Osborn's sins, she's starting to think that there's something quite wonderful on the other side of sanity. Madness, don't you know, is truly freeing, liberating even. Now from there we transition on over to the hospital where we see that Peter Parker is making great strides in his physical therapy, not just in his day life as Peter Parker, but also in his night life as Spider-Man thanks to the help of Black Cat and Captain America. His mind and a heart are as willing as ever, but unfortunately his body still needs some work. It's why when Black Cat and Peter see on the news that the Daily Bugle is under attack by a new goblin, Peter wants nothing more than to rush right out there and try and help those in need, even though this is exactly what Felicia and Steve were afraid of, Peter jumping in half-cocked and getting himself or other people killed. Black Cat continues to say that Peter isn't ready and that the city will surely be able to handle itself. Either Ben will swoop on in in his role as the new Spider-Man or Felicia herself will go and deal with the problem. But Felicia knows Peter well enough to know that he's not going to take no for an answer and so she decides to make this a teachable moment by webbing him up with his own fluid saying that if he truly wants to go help all he has to do is escape the web and take his shooters back. Jeez, look at Black Cat Miyagi over here. Next she's gonna have Peter wash her car or something. Now back over at the Bugle, things are quickly deteriorating. MJ was left at the mercy of the Queen Goblin at the end of the previous issue by Ben, and now she's fighting for her very life. It's here, too, the writers choose to try and differentiate Queen Goblin from all of those who came before. Not only does she have a brand new bag full of tricks, but being a psychologist, she also attacks her prey in the mental realm as well. First figuratively, and then very literally when Queen Goblin pulls out her new ability of the Goblin Gaze. You know, it's like Ghost Rider's penance stare, but for all your psychological problems. Mary Jane is given horrible visions of all of her past failures, failing as an actress, as a model as Tony Stark's assistant as a nightclub manager. Wow, she's had a lot of jobs, hasn't she? Luckily, Mary Jane and Black Cat have become close friends over the last couple issues, and as such, Felicia swoops on in to try and make the save, only for her to get trapped in a goblin chokehold, and then goblin gazed herself. Once again, Felicia also feels like she's a failure as a daughter, as a superhero, as an anti-hero, as a former crime boss. <laughs> Man, everybody just feels like a failure in their own mind, so you know, there's something we can all take away from that, I think. A greatly weakened black cat gets dropped off a building which would be to her death were it not for the late intervention of Spider-Man. No, not Ben Riley. He left due to beyond orders and he's certainly not coming back. No, it's Peter who comes to save the day this time. In his internal monologue, Peter talks about how his muscles are screaming at him and his tendons are on fire, but hey, when the going gets tough, the heroes get going. Queen Goblin ends up pulling out from the battle, conveniently enough, which means Peter and probably two of the most important women in his life get a chance to have a little heart-to-heart. -heart. With Ben in the win and a brand new goblin threat facing New York City, it looks like they have no other option than to give Peter his costume back. They worry about whether even after being able to escape his own webbing, if he's ready or not, Peter in that oh-so-classic Spider-Man quipping sense says that that's the best thing about being Spider-Man. He's never really been ready for anything before, but he's always had had to do it anyway, and has always come out on the other side. Now that's a right pretty speech to be sure at a triumphant moment as Peter finally returns to the mantle, but wait, there's one more thing we gotta deal with as the comic comes to a close. You see, Peter's actually lying about escaping the webbing. He didn't do it. Janie had escaped the Queen Goblin, went to his hospital room, and set him free herself, knowing full well that the original Spider-Man is the only person who could actually help save Ben from beyond. And it's on that note right there, the comic comes to an end, everybody. 
everybody. So that was Amazing Spider-Man issue number 89, and overall I thought it was pretty good, all things considered. I do like this slow, Rocky-esque build they've been having with Peter taking up the Spider-Man mantle again. I can also appreciate that Ben is being shown to be just as much a victim of Beyond's machinations as anyone else, and Peter needs to actively save this other Spider-Man from their clutches. Queen Goblin is fun too, even if I feel like the different writers have wildly different ideas about what makes her tick. In the last story, she was basically the Terminator being puppeteered by Maxine Danger, but here, she actively seems to delight in psychologically profiling people. Again, it's an interesting and fresh take on the Goblin as a villain. I just hope moving forward, the character doesn't feel so schizophrenic. There's also minor nitpicks I could go into, like why did the Queen Goblin leave when she was actively winning the fight? What was the point of having MJ and Felicia both goblin gazed in the same issue when ultimately it seems like they both have the same set of problems? Wouldn't it be more interesting to have the power affect them in wildly different ways? I don't know, I'm editorializing at this point. Overall, I'd give it a 7.5 out of 10. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cape Jewel again, thanking you so much for watching to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not check out my Amazon link down in the description. Yes, that's right, the Cape Jewel channel officially has its own Amazon storefront now. You can pick up a comic or anything else for that matter, and if you did, you'd really be helping me in the channel. So with that out of the way everyone, I will see you again next time. Bye bye